All right, let's get rolling here this morning, this morning, this afternoon. Uh, hey, Derek. So um, we know what to look for. We're looking for um, uh, some FZR trades when we get a full retracement into the zone. This is a um, this is what we show in the trading room, a 120.20. Uh, we had a lot of overhead supply. Um, the breakout today was uh, when we got above our VWAP this morning and uh, we were looking for uh, 4,100 would be our target. We had nothing above us. So the plan was today was just buy FZR trades and Momo trades and try to get to that 4,100 if we can break supply. It finally broke it uh, near the close right around what, by 320. And we had three back-to-back -back Momo trades that uh, caught the shorts and drove price. My breakout, uh, hey Russ, hey Phil, my breakout, hey Thomas, my breakout was 63 and a half and it broke out and it retested 63. This is where the supply was all day. And we were talking about in the chat room all day today, right there, 63 and a half, where's it at? 63 and a half, right there was overhead supply. And it hit its head, hit its head, and then it finally broke here, retested, and she exploded into the close. Um, almost ran 10 points into the close uh, on this setup. So that's just based upon um, on our market profile that I was looking at today. So I thought that was uh, a really nice way how to close the uh, the session up. But we're going to get into the algo here a little bit. Uh, um, we're not going to have a hour and a half conference call like we did last time. We'll make these 30 minutes. So I don't want to make these too long tonight, and I'm going to make sure I cut this off uh, for Gerald so he can get out these sh a shorter uh, conference calls out to you. Um, when you do receive the algorithm, the updated algo, these arrows will automatically fire for you right here. These arrows on these, um, these will automatically fire on the update. These guys fire for you right there, 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 and there. So a little more user friendly than the, than the software, the current software, because uh, they fire on these retracements, whether it be an FCR trade or a Momo trade. So these all fired uh, live in the room today, um, all these setups. And we only have two setups we look for. We look for an FCR. All that says is we're looking for a full zone retracement, meaning we have green zones, we have red zones. And when we get inside of the red zone at this level, our, our green zone, we're looking for a full zone retracement, looking for an arrow to fire. And that means this oscillator is below 20 and we're looking for continuation trades. If we don't get a steep pullback, um, like here, this arrow fired, this is not a setup we will take. Even though the arrow fired, um, our oscillator got below 20, but we're not at the zone. So this is a, that's, that's a non, uh, non, I mean, we, we don't take that setup because it did not qualify. If that oscillator below stayed above 20, that would have been another Momo trade and we're good to go. The one thing that um, I was teaching traders today in the room and we caught some great shorts in the morning and this big move up into the close is we got three moving averages on here and the algo automatically does this for us. Uh, but if you look at it, you get the, um, you want the smaller MA above the intermediate MA right here. You don't want to, crossing down through when the arrow fires. So when you get this software update, you can literally uh, just trade this, the Momo setup by itself off of the 120.20 and the 113.13, just this Momo setup without even taking FCRs. The reason being they show underlying strength in the market or underlying weakness. And the key is, is the oscillator below, which is built into the algo, and then is your uh, MAs here. As long as this small MA does not cross down through when this arrow fires, you have great strength. If you notice on the FZR trades, a little tip I'll give you on the FZR trades, uh, that you get a full retracement below the, the 20 line, right? So that's, that's called a full zone retracement because you're at the retracement level and you're at the zone. So a little tip I'll give you to know that the, 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 the real nice FZR trades is when your smaller MA actually penetrates the zone. So if you get that white, the smallest MA that penetrates the zone, see how it penetrates the zone, you know you're at a full retracement. 
all right so this is a full retracement that's without even looking at price action that penetrated the zone really well for an FZR and that was a nice move of uh, 48.75 all the way up to that 62.75 so 20 S&P points off that FZR because you got a green reversal bar and it's below 20 so that FZR works very very well that way so if you look at this uh, uh, FZR this is more of a shallow FCR because you can see the uh, the shorter term MA did not even touch the FCR. So uh, some traders will only like deep FCR pullbacks, and a good way to do that is looking at that uh, shorter MA if it gets touches my zone and you get a reversal bar. That's typically a nice little burst in the market. You get a deep deep retracement FCR. These are very powerful deep retracement FCRs, um, and I'll go over that in a second. Secondly. The Momo trade, um, it's very easy to see because this oscillator below, if we're in an uptrend, it cannot go below 20, the 20 line down here. So it can't go below my green line, all right? So we cannot go below this. And we have these workspaces set up for you already. It cannot go below this when the arrow fires. So when you guys get this update on this update on the algo, when the arrow fires, look at your oscillator. Is that oscillator below 20? Or is it above 20? If it is below 20, that is not a MOMO. That's not a momentum trade. If it is above 20, that is a momentum trade. But you got to have your MAs not touching each other. This is a qualified MOMO right there. The fill on above the high of the bar, 62 and 3 quarters. This is a MOMO. The high of that bar, that fill is 64 and a quarter, uh, plus or minus a couple ticks. And then there is your 68 plus or minus a couple ticks into the close. And she she gelled up all the way to 77. So these are really nice buys at 3 o'clock, starting at 63 to 77, 64 to 77, and 68 to 77. And they're all qualified because they're all momentum. Why? Because you're looking at you were above 20. You were above 20 when the arrow fired, and you are above 20 when the arrow fired. So... Now you know what to look for on momentum trades, okay? you got to go with the zone, though. You have to go with the zone, and this is what the algo will do also. It goes with the zone. If the zone's green, it's only looking for Momo longs. If the zone's red, only look for Momo shorts, okay? And then what we're going to do is, is we want to make sure when that arrow fires, because you can, you, can, you can turn on the strategy and these arrows will fire, or you can turn on the indicator by itself, and these arrows will automatically fire for you also. And so depending on what you want to do, some of you just may want to run the strategy on SIM, and these arrows will still fire. And, or some of you may just not even want to run the strategy, and you want to run the indicator. These, these arrows will fire on FZRs and MOMO trades. Okay, So that's how it's programmed to do. All right? So that's a big difference on FCR versus MOMO. Um, now on the on the on the flip side, if you look at it, if you go to oh, here we go, that's um, a big MOMO short. I want to show you something real quick before we get rolling here. So if you look, the difference between a a deep pullback MOMO would be here. I mean a FCR. Why? Because here's a little tip for you. Look how the smaller MA is getting inside of the zone. That is a deep, deep pullback. These are one of the best FZR trades you're going to get. If you start watching those, watch the push you get. This was yesterday morning, 38, or 89 potential down to gosh, 70. It's almost 20 S&P points. But you see over here, the arrow when it fires at this level, is the, is the oscillator above 20? No, so it's not an FZR. That's a MOMO. So that's how you distinguish between the two. Either it's a MOMO or it's an FZR. And a good tip, to, to a, a good tip, like I said, the MOMO, uh, what we used to say all the time, Jero and I, back in the day, and we were joking about in the room today, spread equals bread. If there's spread between this intermediate and small MA and that arrow fires and that oscillator is below 80, that is a momentum setup. If the smaller MA is getting into the zone and the arrow fires and I'm above 80, then we are, we are looking to move down. Now, what you can do, I want to show you, 
you can add the VWAP to this chart because you know how I love the VWAP. If I'm below the VWAP, I'm net short. If I'm above the VWAP, I'm net long. So you can add the VWAP, and we, we will add this for you. For, but you have a, a, a lifetime Ninja Trader license to have this on your charts. But you can add the VWAP to this chart, and if you're below the VWAP and you have red zones, these are great FZR cells. These are great Momo cells, right? Because you are the VWAP is the is in a downtrend uptrend. So if you look here yesterday, also let's take a look at the FZR. The FZR we, we, we come into FZR, but it's not a deep FZR. It's a shallow FZR, right? The shallow, if you see a shallow FZR like this, where this does not come into it. The MA doesn't get into the zone. It means you probably got a Momo on the 20 coming right after it. It happens quite a bit. Here's your Momo that came in yesterday and just it got really taken to the woodshed on 99 potential all the way down to what 80, another 19 S&P potential points. So because look, the oscillator never got above 80. So I just, you know, you need to understand when the algo fires because if you don't understand where the algo fires, and you don't understand when a FCR comes up or a Momo, you really defeat the purpose on how you're going to fit this algo to your trading style. But if you know, if you uh, with the update, these arrows will automatically fire for you. All right. With the older version we have now, all these arrows do not fire on all these Momos and all the thing. You have to look at it and say, okay, well, all there's above, it's at the zone. Let's pull the trigger. There, I made it a lot easier user-friendly, these arrows automatically fire. So you don't have to run the strategy. You can just run the indicator and, um, you know, you got your FZR, Momo, Momo. All right. So on the upside, it, it looks the different. So we'll look on the upside. Let me find green. Here we go. So the algo will also get the tweezers also. Now, this is a tweezer trade that the algo will pick up. And this is where you have two dojis back-to-back. Two dojis back to back with overall extreme. It's called extreme Momo tweezer. Extreme Momo means this: is that we we get an arrow that fires. Okay, it got through our supply line, so this thing is ready to take off and and because we broke our supply. But when the arrow fires here, and this will automatically fire for you, when it fired there, look at your oscillator. Always look at your oscillator. Am I above twenty? Yes. But I'm above 80. So 80 is the most extreme buying you can have. And it means the market's possibly going to go what? Vertical, hard, and fast. I call this an extreme Momo in the room. So if you see this, when you get two back-to-back -back dojis, or if you see an extreme Momo happen, and this is off of our larger frame, 12020 larger Rinko, I mean, this move was fast, 26 potential all the way to 50. I mean, we're talking a 30 point S&P point move and in a matter of what? Just under one hour. So because of this oscillator and my arrow would on make fire. So that's really going to help you. I think with the update, what's going to help manual traders that like to manually see these arrows of fire, these arrows of fire, here's a Momo also. Um, here's the FZR. It just, it helps you out knowing when these things fire. Um, and so on, you know. So as we as you progress through a downtrend or uptrend, you know, you're gonna just make sure you go with the overall overall zone. If it's red zone, that's an extreme Momo short, Momo short, FZR, FZR, so on, so on. Okay. So I just want to just go over that a little bit. Those are two tips that really can help accelerate traders' learning curve. To me, a, a great FZR is when you get that smaller MA, which is an 8 MA, EMA. This is an 8 EMA to white. Uh, and th there's no moving average. There's no uh, secret EMA, so I don't think there is. This is an 8 EMA, 50 EMA, and 150. It's no, 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 no big deal. There's no secret sauce for moving averages. They're, they're worthless, but they're great for trend direction and a setup when it sets up uh, on as far as the algo goes. So if you look at um, when you get a deep pullback and you get that 8MA coming into my zone, these are going to probably be your best ones of the morning or afternoon session because they're deep retracements. Deep retracements typically have a lot of punch to them. Okay? When you, but 
when you see the market come into the FCR and starts moving away, start watching for a momentum setup. These momentum setups don't have to get to the zone, right? We don't have to get to the zone on the FCRs because we just need to, uh, we need to see continuations. We need to see these MAs not cross, and we need to see that oscillator hold above 20 or above 80. So just always remember that. That's, that's something you always got to remember. So let's, let's go into... Let's go into the algo. So this is today's trading on the 12020. 12020. Okay, so with the with the 12020, that's you know, I, I don't like going below a 11313. I love the 11313 for momentum trades. But anything other than momentum trades, I don't like FCR trades on the 11313. I love them on the 12020. I love them on the 12025. I love them on the 130 and the 130 35. They work very, very well. You know, so and even the momentum setups work very well in those setups. So you start getting below 20 guys, start getting below this, your FZRs don't work so, out so well. Okay, because you're in a real small time frame. So what I always educate traders is stick with the 113, 13 if you're strictly taking momentum trades on a um, on a smaller time frame. Meaning if you're gonna take a smaller time frame. Let's go to 113.13 up here. So if I change this to 113, let me just show what I'm talking about. If you're going to trade off a smaller time frame, this is going to help you out with the algo also. Know that the FZRs, they just, they're, made, they're meant for deep retracements. They're fools on retracements. So, but momentum's, momentum setups work very, very well with the 113.13 because it's a smaller time frame. It catches those, those um, the market when it has momentum. So you use the smaller time frame the same way. So this is a smaller time frame, and we all know I love that last 10 minutes uh, of trading because you get a nice little push with the algorithm, is right here we had a FCR. Now we had a Momo. This is a Momo on the large 12020 because that's why it says Momo. But it's not a Momo on the 113.13, is it? It's not. It's got a full retracement. Because when that arrow fired, it's at a full retracement. So you can use the 113.13 for, for the momentum trades. But what I like to do is I like to get it right coming outside the zone. So when you're trading these setups, an FZR coming from an FZR, you want to try to get in. This is an FZR on the 20. So what I like to do is watch the FZR form on the 120 and then try to get a momentum on a smaller time frame. The smaller time frame momentum trades work very, very well. You know, especially when the market's breaking down or breaking out. So just heads up on that. The same way with the algo. When you start looking at the algo, this is today's on the 120. You know, if, if, if you look at the 120 today, and there's your 120 on the algo here, is the same exact thing. Is you, I wouldn't start out with a ultra small time frame, and I wouldn't start out with an ultra large time frame. I mean, you know, I like starting out, what I would do is once you first get the algo, I put a 120-20 up and a 135-35. Because what you're doing is you're getting a larger frame with the 135-35 and you get a smaller frame with the 125, I mean with the 120-20. That's a really good way to do it. In fact, when we set these workspaces up, Gerald and I, with this new algo coming out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split it in half. I'm going to put a, the 135-35 on the left. I'm going to put the 120, 20 to the right. Now, what you can do is you can, you can, if you want to manually look at these things, you can let the 135, 35 give you the trend direction and then fire in when the 20 agrees and turn the algorithm on. Or if you want to let the algorithm just run around the clock, um, I'm letting it run from 9.30 to 4.30 or 4 o'clock during the day. Uh, you can run it 20, up to 20, 3 out of 24 hours a day. And we're going to show you... Um, we have private conference calls on how you can, um, how you can, um, how you can back test this, forward test this. But we're going to get into numbers. I'm going to get a little bit of numbers tonight, uh, but I want to have a private conference call with members and show you on how to uh, arrange some of these numbers um, because this is obviously public to uh, everybody. So um, I want to get a private conference call as soon as you guys get the algorithm. Uh, when Gerald gets done wrapping it, then we're going to have a private, we're going to have a series of private conference calls 
we're not going to have any more public conference calls with this. Uh, once it's released, we're only having private conference calls for members only. So it will only be for members, and we're going to have a series of probably eight of them. Uh, eight of them, I'm going to show you how to back test, forward test, sim trade, live trade, all that stuff. We're going to go through all that stuff. So that's this is our last, uh, as, as far as the conference calls go, this is our last conference call. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get right into getting the algorithm out to you guys, having Jiro wrap it, get the algorithm out to you guys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in and we're going to start showing you how to utilize this on a week-to-week -week basis. All right, but it's only members only, and Jiro will make sure that you guys only get a password. And then uh, please do not give the passwords out to anybody. Um, it's only for members because I'm going to dig right into the guts of the program, and we're going to show traders how to utilize this that, um, that are with us, okay? So just we'll do that uh, exactly. You'll have to sign a disclaimer that you won't be letting anybody in the conference calls. Um, also, uh, with the disclaimer, uh, that you were aware of the risk with auto trading and all that stuff. So that's going forward, okay? This is our last call per se with this, and then we're gonna we're we're gonna get this thing out to you, and we're gonna get this thing wrapped, and then um, Gerald's gonna send a notice on the next conference call. So the next conference call, um, we will send out to you a notice and tell you exactly when it's gonna be. But then after we start our first conference call on that, then what we'll do is we'll go on a week to week basis, okay? And it'll only be for members only. All right, is everybody clear on that? Hemi, wife, you understand that? Are we clear? Everybody understand what we're doing going forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's break down this a little bit. All right, so well, what we have is we have the, um, uh, this is the one twenty twenty. So when you do this stuff, right, um, you have a trailing stop here. And we, the, so let's just break this down a little bit. Let's get and break that, this down come into it all right so here's the trail one trail two trail three trail four you know when you want to when you want to have a tight trail let's say this is a 20 right so if it's a 20 I just on a 35 a, a, a second ago running so let's bring this down you can go all the way down to a 22 or 21 trail what that's going to do is that's going to hug price. Let's go back to it until our first target's hit. So let me toggle this back on. And what that tells you is Trail 1 ATR is going to hug price and sell all four contracts if you get if it closes outside of that ATR by one close. So if it violates the ATR by trying to get to the first contract at all, it's going to stop you out. Now you can go as tight as you want or as loose as you want. Typically, the rule of thumb, if you trade off of a 120, you should do around a 23 ATR or 22. You know, 21 is real tight, but, you know, I just gone 30 days back, so it's going to tabulate for a sec. Um, but, you know, you know, you can do what you want to do, but I, the first trail says this. When the first trail starts, starts uh, when the first targets are trying to be hit, that trail is going to trail here. So let's take a look at it. So see how tight it is? The most risk that you take in the beginning of a trade is going to be where? It's going to be at the infancy of the trade. So this is where you're going to take the most risk on, right? It's going to take your most risk. So I don't want to have a 70 ATR or a 54 ATR or a 58 ATR or a 60 ATR. I don't want to have it out here. What if what if what happens is is it you get in here and all of a sudden uh, it would have trapped to drop all below the ATR and stop you out. I mean, that would be a, a, a large loss. So what I did with the program is this. I said, give me the best of both. You have an ATR you can start trailing. And typically, if you've been trading this stuff live with these candles, they only retrace around 50% typically in a hard move up, meaning every one that moves, you're typically retracing 50% of that candle. So you don't even have to, on your first target, you don't have to put a 22. You can put, I've been playing around all the way down to a 13 trail. It's been working well. So the trail typically only goes half of that candle, which is 10. So I give it three more ticks to leeway. So that will trail you up to your first target on a 13 tick trail off of a 20 uh, chart. Does that make sense, guys? Did, did you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to put the bottom of the bar 
if, if that makes sense. You can have a tighter trail if you've been working with these Rinko bars. You don't have to put 20. The first target usually they take off. You don't have to have it below below that. You can make it tight. Now, if you wanted just to make sure that your first target is going to be hit before um, below that bar, then just keep it uh, three ticks or two ticks below that uh, that um, that Rinko. I'm sorry, below that Rinko. Okay. So that's a the, that's the most risk that you're going to take. You're going to take the most risk in the beginning of the trade. So you want to tighten it then. So what I have a program says this, once I get filled here, if it closes below my first ATR, it's going to sell all contracts immediately, all of them, no matter what. Because why would you want to hold to a 70 or a 60 or whatever your longer ATR is, why would you want to hold that, right? It's not conducive to a great trading plan. You don't want to do that. So that's how you want to do it. Now, what I've been doing is I've been noticing my tight the first and second targets have been hitting. So watch, I can change this back. Jr. I promise we're not going to go too long, bud. I promise. Give me about, give me about five more minutes here, and then we'll. So if I go to 21, remember I got it. I my now it says my second target is now 21 also. So it's saying that my second target, if it breaches, if it closes below a 21 trail, remember my my rank is 20. If it closes below 20 trail, it's going to sell all my contracts, all of them, okay, all. All right, so let me show you here real quick. Now I got you, Gerald. So let me pop this back up. So if you put trail one as 21, it's saying whatever your target is, it's going to keep trailing 21 until your target hits or it gets stopped out. If you put trail one and trail two as the same number of 21 and you're trading a 20 chart, then you're telling yourself if it closed below that ATR of 21, it's going to sell all contracts and either when it closes below it or it hits target one and target two. So, so let's take a look at it right here. So now I just put my, my, my tighter ATR to, to both. What I told it to do is this. I said, listen, I want you to trail price since I'm using a 20 Rinko. I want you to use a 21 trail price, 21 ATR, and I want you to trail that price not only for the first contract, but the second contract. And if it violates, before it's my second contract, before it hits that, sell all of them when it closes below here, then close below my trailing stop. Everybody see that? Does everybody understand that? Give me a wife, you understand that, what I'm doing here. We're going to have to work in baby, this stock is very sophisticated, so we need to work in baby steps here. So everybody understand that? Your trail one and your trail two, if you have it the same, it's going to stay the same, right? But you can stagger them. So I can put 21 to the first target, but after that first target's hit, let's say I want to do this. I'm going to put 21 to my first target. I'm using a 20 ATR. But I want everything else to trail my ultimate zone. You know how I love 54. You guys know I'm, I'm in love with my 54 level, my zone. So watch this. What if I say, okay, let's get to the first target. That takes a lot of my risk off. And let's put everything at 54. All right, let's put it right outside of 54. Let's put it at 55, right outside of my zone. Now what I'm saying is, no matter what, if pri now there's two things I put in the algo. I have a stop price and I have a trail price. Whatever it hits first, it's going to execute. So you can put a hard stop in in the trail. Whatever hits first, I have a stop price and I have a trail price. All right? Just to make sure if you use a 20 Rinko bar, don't put your stop at 10. I can get stopped out every time. Make sure it's below at least 21 you know, or less, or 18 or 17, something like that. You just don't want to put your stop, you know, on a 20 Rinko to 5. You get stopped out every time, if that makes sense. So I, I, I have whatever comes first. Either you're going to stop me out at my stop price, or this trail is going to stop me out on all the, all the contracts. Now, let's take a look at it. So what I told the algo to do is this. I said, listen, when I get long this contra these contracts, 
then it's going to tell me that this is going to trail until this right here hits that target. After that target is hit, my new trail is going to start at 50, 55 right here. And it's going to keep trailing 55. All right, it's going to keep trailing 55. All right, until we get stopped out. So, same way over here. On the short, it started out, right? Started out right here. And so I got my first target off, see my first target, and then it jumped right to 54. Okay? Let's say you want to do this. You're like, okay. Well, what I want to do is I want to try to get the whole run. And you want to go, let's say you want to do this. Let's say you just want to put all 21. You're like, you know what, I just want the first push. And this happens on wave one right here, which I'll show you. So if I click wave one, and I click that, and I put all 21s in, that's telling me this. After every trend change, and it's going to only take the first wave, and it's going to sell all my contracts out at the first wave, no matter what. Only after the first trend change, that's what wave one means. So we might as well get into that real quick a little bit. Wave one means it's taking the first retracement after a trend change. So if I click on that toggle switch, it's taking the first wave, and I've got it all being sold, I mean executed out at a 21 tight trail. So now I'm telling myself on that first trend change, we've seen them sometimes, and they just explode straight up or straight down. You have a real tight trail. You don't have to use a 20. You can use a 13 if you want on the first trend change. You can use a 5, whatever you want to do. But see what it's doing here is this. Now I'm telling the algorithm, this, that's what I mean, the functionality of this thing is awesome. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this thing. You can be a scalper, you can be a position trader, you can do whatever you want with this trail. So I just told it, said, hey, I want all four contracts to hit. So if this thing kept going vertical like this, it would have kept you in. And it does that sometimes. You guys seen it on larger time frames? You'll get this first wave, and I'll get going and going and going and going, especially on the 35 or 30 or 25, and you see it just keeps going. And what it does, it'll show that price. You don't even want to play these other waves. That's fine. You can tell the algorithm not to play these other waves. Just play the first wave. That's it. All right? And you can do that, and it'll keep doing that on the first wave. That's another way you can do it. Now, that's called wave one. So if you click wave one, that's specifically only going to get the first wave after a trend change. If you uncheck wave one, you guys are going to get all the waves. Do you guys understand that? Give me a way if you understand that before I move on. Gerald, give me to 515. We'll shut this thing off. Give me five more minutes. We all clear on that, guys? So wave one is the first wave after a trend change. If you uncheck wave one, you're taking every single wave. If you want a tight ATR, put all the ATRs the same. What you're telling the ATRs to do, those four ATR staggered ATRs, is saying, hey, as I hit targets, I want to loosen it up. But maybe some of you don't want to loosen it up. Maybe you want to take the first wave, because it's a big push, and have a tight ATR on that first wave up or down. And maybe you want to use a small time frame like a 113.13 or what have you. You know, so if you see right here, I took not, I, I said, I want to take the first wave not only off, and then we get this. Now, what you can do is obviously, you go in, and let's say, let's say you want to do this. I want to take the first wave, and I want 21 to hold me tight on the first two, and then I want to ride this puppy up as far as it wants to take me. Give me out to 70. Or even out to 55 is fine because 55 is just below my zone. Or if you want to stagger it and say the third contract, take me out at 55, hold me above 55, and the fourth contract, give me out to 70. Now what you're telling yourself is that target three and target four, you're going to let it breathe. So after target one and target two hits, and it doesn't get stopped out by the 21 ATR because it's trailing, it's trailing, it's super tight, right? You're, you're trading off a 20 Renko and you're trailing with the 21. That's super, super tight. If you do that, 
Then the third ATR, you can loosen up to 54 saying, hey, I know my zone's accurate 54. If it's a hard trend, I should never break my lower zone. Everybody knows that. Ever since I brought this algorithm out, everybody knows if you break 54, you're probably going into a deep retracement to 70. It could do a trend change, and then you're screwed, right? Everybody knows you keep above 54, your, your trend's intact. So if you do 54, then, then here's what it says. It says this. It says, okay, first two contracts, I want to stay above. I mean, I, I don't want to break my, my 20 until it hits, right? It clicks. So it didn't. Then look, look, price action gets sloppy, right? After the first wave push up, after trend change, we all know that. It likes to come back to the zones to give us what? FZR trades. It will not get you in a position on FZRs, right? FZRs, unless you add contracts, which I'll show you how to do that in the next, next conference call. You can add here and add here if you want to with this trail. I don't want to really get in it tonight because I don't have time, but we can add on the way up also. But my point is, is that you can list the ATR. See, the ATR is here 21 on the first and second contract. Then I loosen up to 54. And then after I hit my third contract, I'm saying, listen, I'm going to loosen this puppy up to 70 for big trend days. Everybody knows the last couple of Fridays I showed videos where we got long at 10 o'clock in the morning and it came down to my 70 and it bounced right off of it and it kept the algo long. Uh, uh, two S&P, uh, the S&P was long at 10 o'clock one time, one time at 9.45, held all the way in the close. And it was, one was a four, 50, just over 50 S&P points. So, but that's for your last runner if you want that. You know, that's how you can stagger these. What I'm saying is don't take on so much risk in the first one here. So, like I said, we have a lot to go over in these conference calls. I'm going to show you the, this is a great way to start out, but that, that, this just gives you an idea what we're looking at. There's a way to add trades on, uh, which I'll show you how to do. You can add trades on, on uh, uptrends or downtrends. I'm going to show you how to do that with the algo also. Um, in our conference call, where you can add here, you can add here, add more contracts. Uh, in other words, let me just show you real quick. You can add into uh, into more contracts as far as that goes. Do, 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 do. So let's say, let's say you guys want to go a thousand ticks and let the ATR bring you out. Then let's say you want a thousand ticks on everything. And say, okay, here's your hard stop right here. You don't need it at 40. You need that at 21 since you're using a 20 bar. Here's your hard stop in place, by the way. And there's other ingredients built into the algo you won't even see under parameters that you can't change. And it's just, it's just parameters I put into it, sort of my secret sauce, and I don't even put those under parameters. So I've got about, what, it's just under six, probably seven, maybe seven different other things, eight things going on in the background too. So, you know, that's for the trend filter we have. A lot of it's with the zones and all that stuff. So, but you don't have to change those. The algo does the work for you. But I'll show you something here is how we can add trades too on the way up. Um, but remember, you, you don't have to tr uh, trade a specific, you don't have to trade the uni Renko bar. Some may like the sim Renko bar with it. Some will like minute charts with it. You know, some will like the trend filter to be our Simrenko. Like the 35 Simrenko works great with the algo. It's a great trend filter. You know, I put the 35 Simrenko on that little sucker. So, you know, it's a really great way to do it. Um, so, oh, I forgot to change my, hold on one second. Forgot to change my ATRs. All right, so we loosen this up to 54. For is that at 70 it's fine. Um, there's a way to where I'm going to show you how to specifically um, change that for smaller time frames or larger time frames. But like I said, you don't need to specifically use an Uni Renko. Um, some traders will like to use a two minute chart, three minute chart, you know, or if you use other Renko bars, this is this is adaptable to Really, you don't have to just use the uni. Um, you can use other 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 uh, 
bar types also. Uh, 